The presentation will take about an hour, and we're going to have questions during the activity. We're going to have a break sooner or later. Massimo will, will tell me when, and then we're going to answer some questions. I beg you to please the Q&A uh, part. You have it uh, in uh, the toolbar, Zoom. There you have it, preguntas y respuestas in Spanish or Q&A in English, and please use that uh, system so that we can have all the questions in order because that's what we're going to read out for Massimo to answer later. This webinar has simultaneous translation, English, Portuguese, and Spanish, and uh, those of you who are connected uh, through Zoom, you can select a translation with the globe. Massimo is going to speak English. If so, if you don't feel comfortable enough with English, you can choose either Portuguese or Spanish. You can ask the questions in any language. Choose your own, not Russian, but uh, English, Portuguese, or Spanish. And we'll uh, uh, send the questions uh, to Massimo. The webinar is uh, being recorded and it's going to be available later. Massimo is a senior software engineer and he's working in R&D of uh, apps uh, for decision making and uh, for facilitate um, and the internet uh, operations. Some of the open source uh, tools that he uses are reference resources for uh, to monitor the performance of the internet. Certainly, you may have seen, many of you may know VGA uh, Alert and Pat and Simona, uh, Ripe Star, among others. Massimo worked for almost six years in Ripe NCC, that is the National Registry, uh, is the European Registry of the Internet, and at present he's uh, contributing to the automation and monitoring of the global I, uh, network. So, with that, I give the floor to Massimo for him to start. Massimo, you have the floor. Thank you very much. So, um, hello. Hello, everybody. I'm uh, uh, really excited for this webinar, also because they told me it's uh, uh, like there are more than uh, 250 uh, registered uh, attendees. So, that is uh, uh, really nice, really good. And uh, um, so I would like also to thank you, first of all, for registering and participating. Also to uh, thank the LACNIC uh, uh, staff uh, because they organized this and uh, uh, they invited me and they organized it, so I really like it. And also the, uh, uh, the people working at the translation at the moment uh, uh, in three languages, really, uh, really nice. Uh, so my name is Massimo Candela. Um, uh, I'm a senior software engineer at, at NTT, and uh, NTT is a, a huge company that offers all sorts of services, among which there is uh, uh, it's a tier one uh, provider. Um, so we uh, have one of the largest IP network in the world, and I contribute there, as also Guillermo said, to the automation and monitoring. NTT uh, doesn't offer uh, geolocation services, or at least to the best of my knowledge, uh, but it is uh, anyway uh, allows all these employees to do uh, all sorts of research and contribution to the, uh, let's say, community for the global internet. And so um, I also do some uh, geolocation. Uh, but I started doing the, uh, with the geolocation topic in 2015. Uh, while working at uh, uh, Ripe NCC, where I built uh, a geolocation service that after I we will briefly see, and after I kept doing research uh, in the topic, and I often receive questions, and I hope that today with this webinar I can answer uh, some of your questions. But let's go uh, to the point. So the I'm going to remove this. Uh, so the uh, let's talk about the um, 
IP geolocation. What is the IP geolocation? IP geolocation is essentially uh, the process of uh, given an IP address, uh, understand where uh, the device connected with such IP address is. We will not talk about GPS, one, because I don't know anything about it, but also because uh, when there is a GPS on board, uh, I mean, it's not uh, IP geolocation, or at least not necessarily IP geolocation. Uh, but we will focus mostly on the most common approaches to geolocate IP addresses, like belonging to the infrastructure, for example, or anyway devices which they don't have or they don't share GPS information. So why would you like uh, to do uh, some? Um, why would you like to do uh, IP geolocation? Well, the first reason is because. Uh, you may you want to respect you want you have to respect country regulation so you want to know where the user is in order to respect local regulations or you want to um, analyze and respect the rules about data locality so in that case you want to detect where uh, data is passing in the internet infrastructure or uh, you want to for example provide different content to different countries like you have a uh, like a website you want to just translate it in another language or you want to offer different movies for people in a country and other movies in people in other country for example because there are copyright laws or troubleshooting it's really common when you're troubleshooting something you do for example a trace route you want to know not only the ips but also the location geographical location of where those ips are and Last but not least, research. Uh, researchers use a lot of geolocation data. For example, you want to monitor the evolution, evol uh, the evolution of the network. You want also to uh, analyze uh, specific cybersecurity events. The uh, geolocation is an important information for your uh, data. Um, so, in general, there are two approaches uh, for two main families for the geolocation, the uh, passive and the active geolocation. Uh, the passive geolocation is a type of geolocation that is done uh, without doing any um, measurement by using gen in general static data. The active geolocation instead uh, is done with active measurement. We will see uh, what that means. But let's start with the uh, passive geolocation. So I'm going to show a list of methods uh, uh, used for passive geolocation. So um, the first um, is, uh, there is not really a name, uh, just call it host names. So essentially operators in the world since ever, they uh, start annotating their routers uh, with uh, a fully qualified domain name. And they uh, use the such domain uh, to put uh, geographical information. So for example, they can use ISO code, YATA code, or a common language location identifier code, and they use it to annotate the host. Um, so basically you do a reverse DNS and you find that information. This is an example, okay? So uh, the problem with this is that there is no real, uh, really a standard and um, so when you are lucky, uh, these uh, uh, host names are annotated with standard code like ISO, YADA, and CLLI. But in a lot of other cases, operators, they just put whatever they feel, whatever they feel it makes sense uh, to uh, identify that node. Because mostly this geolocation is done by the operators for themselves to uh, give a name to their devices. Um, so, uh, so not, not only inside the host name, there is no specific position, no convention what to use, but also sometimes they, they are not used standard code and other times networks merges or networks merge or, or operators, they, um, uh, they, they are different operators uh, working on the same network without proper coordination. Sometimes we can see also some host names that they are different uh, across the same network. Another source uh, of geolocation is the, uh, another possible source is the DNS lock record, which uh, there is an experimental document uh, in the IATF, which is the RFC 1876, which is in this case scarcely used. It really never reached, uh, let's say the, the, the 
real public. It is uh, not so often implemented and also scarcely used, maybe also because they use this uh, WGS84 format like this, which is maybe a bit uh, like complicated uh, that you have to add this record for each IP that you want to geolocate. So maybe this is one of the reasons. Anyway, it's not really uh, used a lot, but this is at least organized. It would be, let's say, it would be uh, uh, easy to read. Um, and after we have the uh, RIR uh, database, uh, the RIR databases uh, like RIR uh, are regional internet registries like LACNIC, and they uh, and they um, uh, they provide a database uh, with uh, information about uh the resource like a prefix uh and the company associated with that prefix or with that autonomous system um sometimes this information is used for geolocation so what they essentially do is they associate a specific prefix uh to the location the address of the company that owns or holds the ip address which is not clearly a uh, 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 correct way to do. So up to a few years ago, whatever IP address of Google you were uh, uh, requiring geolocation, a lot of them, they were uh, being geolocated in Mountain View, even if clearly is not uh, uh, the case. I uh, remember clearly, like I was able to reach from uh, my apartment in Rome, uh, an IP of Google with six milliseconds, but the geolocation was always in Mountain View, which is impossible um so uh, and we will talk a bit about this uh later so now uh second page um still related to passive geolocation um so we have the uh still the rir have uh the geolog field the geolog field is not all the RIR or the only right APNIC is a specific field that you can associate with your INET NAM object in the RIPE database or APNIC database to provide geolocation for a specific prefix in the form of lat latitude and longitude. Is it scarcely used? It is specific only to these two RIRs, so only with resources uh, in these two RIRs. And in addition to that, uh, the lat latitude and longitude is a bit ambiguous because like you want to geolocate a prefix what latitude and longitude you put like the center of a city the center of a country what specific point do you put it, it is a bit um a bit strange on that point and after uh, another source this time is uh, let's say some that is flexible and it's uh, uh, organized well is the geofeeds uh, for self publishing um, we will talk about this more in detail so i'm going to skip it now the only cons of this uh, method is that there is for now no centralized repo but there is an attempt done by lacnic that we will see so um, you may you may be surprised but crowdsource data is also one of the main uh, source of geolocation data because every time some geolocation is wrong the operator they provide this data to uh, uh, geolocation providers and they update that so a lot of uh, ip geolocation is coming from actually crowdsourced data and there are also platforms like right ip map that allows direct crowdsource from the people last commercial data sets the commercial data set they are at the moment providing 90 percent of the geolocation and they come they have a proprietary method that they combine all the sources that you that i told you before all these passive methods plus other proprietary methods they allow for sure crowdsource because you can correct it they are they take at least up to a few years ago, it was really clear. They take uh, a lot of registry information from the various RIR, uh, and uh, they also use, as also declared by some of them in, in various public events, uh, logs coming from website, like e-commerce logs. So if you buy a product on an e-commerce, you ship it to an address, they associate the address to the IP address, and they say, well, that IP address, it must be in that place. 
it may be true, it may be wrong, maybe you ship it to somebody else, maybe you order it from a different company. But in general, uh, they also use such information. And I repeat, they provide a lot of the geolocation data available at the moment. So now, what do you do when the geolocation is wrong? Uh, the first thing uh, is RIR, the registries, they are not uh, responsible for geolocation in, in, in no way. So they just uh, allocate resources and they are not geolocation providers. They never provided any of this information out. So there is uh, no way that they can help you with that. Some of this, like I said, right, and ethnic, they introduce some fields to try to help, but they also declare that these fields are scarcely used and also scarcely used by uh, geolocation providers. So it's, they are not really uh, working in improving the geolocation. So what do you have to do? Unfortunately, there is no centralized repo, there is no magic trick. The thing that you have to do is to contact the geolocation provider. So I keep this, this list that I try to keep up to date and um, with all the major geolocation providers. And the first four that they are involved, they allow you to crowdsource the geolocation by, with an API or with a form. Uh, so they facilitate this process um, and so basically you can easily provide the correct information to your geolocation and the other operators they uh, provide instead generic contacts uh, uh, where you can contact them and correct it. I'm in contact with some of them and in particular there is one at the moment that is working to uh, go in the list above so maybe soon uh, the dynamics and this list will change. Um, it is important to note that basically almost all of them, they accept Geofit, which is the format that now we will uh, talk. So Geofit, um, as I said, uh, there is a draft here, a document in the IETF, it's informational. Um, it is a format for self-published IP geolocation fee self-published is the key, which means that you publish it yourself in your website somewhere where you want. Uh, or you can also don't publish it, you just create a file. Uh, only for the prefixes and IP that you want, uh, and that you maybe uh, you want to publish it because they are wrong and you want to provide, create such file. It is extremely flexible compared to all the previous uh, uh, format that I explained because it allows geolocation of a single IP address or geolocation of an entire uh, prefix. Uh, it allows, uh, it uses the method of the longest prefix match. So you can essentially say this entire prefix is in a specific region and this sub prefix is instead is another specific city and the longest prefix match uh, will let you know where it is. We will see that. And also it's flexible in terms of accuracy. Because you can, uh, you can like geolocate it to uh, whatever accuracy you want. Like, uh, like for example, from the uh, just the country to city level. At the moment, it is adopted by Google, um, which means that Google not only provides every day a list of these IPs in this format, but also pulls. Uh, some of these files from uh, other, I think at the moment is around 400 uh, operators that they gave essentially the possibility to Google to pull this information and they use it for their uh, geolocation pipeline. And also this format, even if you don't publish it anywhere, uh, it is useful to, uh, as a format to keep it up to date and to provide it as a uh, way to correct things to for example, geolocation providers. Some of the geolocation providers in the list before, they clearly uh, uh, make explicit that they accept such sort of file. Uh, Milaknik, which is the portal in, uh, um, in, uh, uh, in Laknik uh, to manage your resources, has also a specific section where you can create uh, your uh, geofits and they will store it for you. 
So uh, now, um, the GeoFeed format. Uh, it is essentially a CSV uh, in the format of I3 uh, or prefix, the uh, comma country, comma region, comma city, comma. The last comma is because before there was even the possibility to uh, specify a zip code, but uh, it was clearly too much and uh, operators uh, may have intended that to provide maybe zip code of uh, users at home or things like this and during the discussion at the ATF it was considered like not something that we should provide so for back compatibility there is still a comma at the end but probably possibly will go away uh, soon uh, the uh, the country is uh, expressed in uh, two letters ISO code, like 31661 alpha 2. And we will actually uh, see it. I see that there are a lot of uh, things going on at the moment in the chat. So we'll open this. Uh, we go, this is the online browsing platform of the ISO. Uh, so we go on the country codes and we put, for example, my country, Italy. Okay, search. And as you can see, the alpha two, which is the one specified, is IT, this one. So basically, in place of the country, you would put IT. Now to search for the region, still on this page, you click on the country, and it will tell you all the possible region, okay? And these are in general like two uh, like two items separated by a dash. Now, instead, for the city, is a UTF-8 text field that you can put essentially whatever. But uh, I strongly suggest you to use the geonames format which is available, it, it is basically the closest to a standard uh, available. You can click on this. Oh, it's gone. They don't want it anymore us to access uh, this uh, resource. Let me try again. Uh, oh, okay, there's something wrong with the URL. So the name, which is this one, uh, so you can essentially provide the city in this format uh, with the name column. Um, so now uh, you can uh, like generate this file, keeps it, keep it up to date. There is no auto discovery mechanism. So in general, geolocation platform will not uh, read it automatically except for Google, which has a, a, an automatic system. Uh, but um, the uh for the uh, but anyway having it uh, helps you to for example share it with uh, some of these uh, providers or with LACNIC. uh this is uh, an example uh, a series of example like this is when you want to geolocate as slash 24 you want to actually remove the geolocation and say not geolocated here so you put like empty everything it is allowed here instead we have a specific IP address that we geolocate in Frosinone, which is a city in Italy, in the region Lazio, city Frosinone. Uh, another IP, like point two, is in the same country and city, but is in Rome. And after, this is an example of uh, longest prefix match, we geolocate the entire select 16 in, uh, in the same region, Lazio here, but we don't specify the city. So we, what that means, it means that every time we look for the number one or the number two, we is geolocated in a specific city for all the other one, we don't know, but at least we know that they are in such a region. Uh, so this is an example with an IPv6 where uh, it is geolocated uh, everything in Alabama, no city specified. And here is an example on, a slash, uh, on entire slash 25 geolocated in the US, just the country. So these are just some examples. So I think now uh, it's time for a, a small break uh, so we, where you can do questions. And I will now uh, stop sharing.
uh, and enable the uh, translation. And if you have a question, you can uh, do it now. Bueno, eh, tenemos una pregunta. Recuerden que, que we si do quieren... have a question here. Remember that if you have questions, you can uh, ask them in the Q and A. And the question is by Andres Acevedo. He's asking, do geofeeds have any cost for the entity? Do you have to pay anything? Uh, see, yes. Yeah, so, so no, GeoFit is is is, is self-published. So it's just a CSV file. You pub you publish it on your file on your website, wherever you want, and you use it to communicate with the com with the uh, geolocation provider. There is no cost associated with it, and no cost also associated with the LACNIC repository. It is just a clear format to specify in an easy way geolocation data, which is taking more and more uh, role. So in addition to Google, which is anyway an important player, possibly soon will be also used in an auto-discover way. Uh, but no, there is no cost associated with it. Thank you, Massimo. So far, there are no more questions. Remember, I remind the audience that if you want to ask any questions, you can ask them during the presentation. Here we have another one, Massimo. What contents providers use the indicated geo feeds? Netflix, Google, Facebook? This is a question by Javier Villagran. So at the moment, uh, the only one that explicitly said it that is using it is Google and uh, they are uh, employing it uh, in a, let's say, a serious level. Uh, so the only one for now is Google. But I repeat, uh, most of the geolocation is coming to, from other geolocation providers, and those geolocation providers, they also use GeoFeed to accept correction in case you need to do it. So, yeah, this is my answer. Uh, if I know in the future other providers like Google and Facebook, uh, and, Netflix and Facebook using it, I will uh, uh, let you know. We have a new one, it's in English. So I'm going to read it in English. Eric Dugas, he said, I joined a, a little late. But Massimo spoke about commercial geolocation provider that accepts GeoFeed. Is there a list available? I know specifically that Google and ipinfo.io can use self-published GeoFeed. Yeah, in the list that I provided, uh, in uh, so even if not everybody is uh, explicitating that feature, uh, they are accepted. So. Uh, Except, okay, let me share again the, the, the list. So this is the list that I shared. Uh, so the uh, IP info, for example, it does, and this for anyway, they have also a form for doing that. This one, ipdata.co also does it. And I also know that uh, some uh, colleagues, they managed to, uh, basically provide this file and get uh, geolocation updated from others providers in this list. Uh, but they don't uh, specify that in, the, uh, in their uh, website. I know that ipdata.co is in the process of, uh, of uh, making it explicit. And they communicate it to me, so I cannot say anything explicit for the other providers. Gracias, Massimo. Eh, si te parece... Thank you, Massimo. If you agree, we can go on with the presentation. And if later on we have more questions, we could uh, have another Q&A session, right? Perfect. So I'm going to disable now the... Uh, presentation and I'm going to share again my uh, presentation. Uh, so... Um, before to go, I just wanted to clarify because I saw the questions that you asked. So the first step that I would do, because the main problem that we said here is uh, actually 
I forgot to mention, the main problem here with the passive geolocation methods is that these are manual methods. So as you saw, these are all information that they are provided manually and they suffer, suffer for this thing that I annotated here and I forgot to mention, which is extremely important. You uh, have to keep them updated. Not only you have to keep them updated, but also the geolocation providers have to periodically check if that information changed. Uh, so uh, this is a, a lot of problems with, for example, using RIR data. Uh, when you buy a prefix from another uh, provider uh, or you transfer it from another region, that information becomes stale because it's not automatically calculated. You have to update it and they have also to pull it back again. This is one, this is the main issue with this, uh, with this system. Even, even the GeoFeed, which is a list uh, standard, you have to update it that and they have to use it uh, for uh, reading that, which is uh, an important, uh, an important uh, issue. So uh, to come back to this, to this year, the main thing is to, to have your geolocation corrected is for sure to contact the provider. But before that, Try to check which of the previous methods is actually providing a wrong geolocation. So, for example, be sure that you updated your information in the RIR database or you updated your information in uh, the uh, RIR geolog field in particular. So, if you are, uh, if you, few people are using it, but be sure at least that from your side everything is correct. That's the first step. And after, as also suggested by the various RIR go and change in the uh, geolocation providers. Okay, so um, now let's go to the part of the geolocation, the active geolocation. So the active geolocation tries to solve that problem that I just described, which is essentially that all those methods before they were manual. Okay, the fact that they were manual means um, too easy to forget too easy to uh, have all data. Uh, we need some automatic method and active geolocation tries to do that. So what is active geolocation? Active geolocation uses latency measurement, okay, for example. Uh, all the various methods available, they are based on these three steps that I'm going to describe now. So imagine that you have a set of devices, set of servers, and you know the location of this server because maybe you place the, those servers there. So what you can do is to take those servers of known location that from now on we will call landmarks, take those, those landmarks and from there do a latency measurement to the target IP address. So for example, to a device that you want to geolocate. Uh, what you get uh, with this ping uh, is uh, the round trip time. Uh, and after you can convert this round trip time in uh, distances, in a distance. Uh, so what you do is you divide the round trip time by two and you obtain an approximation of the one way delay. It is an approximation because you don't know if uh, the round trip time took more in the way to reach from the source to the target or to the target uh, back to the source, so you don't know how much time is spent in both ways, but it's an approximation anyway, there is no better way of doing it, so you divide it by two and you get the latency from the source to the target. And after what you do, uh, you multiply it for a coefficient, which is uh, basically usually expressed in kilometers per millisecond, which is uh, like, uh, in general, two thirds of the speed of light. Two thirds of the speed of light is because that is the uh, time uh, uh, needed, uh, it, the kilometers done in one millisecond by a light signal uh, to traverse a fiber. This is of course the theoretical maximum, which includes, which is based on a, sim a simplified idea where between the landmark and the target, there is one straight fiber, no hops in between. Of course, it's all approximation. And the various geolocation methods, they also, after tune these values, they improve it, they do refinement, they do filtering, but this, they have every time this in common, this basic idea. Uh, so 
after once you have the the distance and this imagine this is your landmark you know the distance and basically you can say well the target is inside this area right so cannot be farther than that this is the idea behind it so there are three families of algorithm one is process landmark that we will see multilateration also called constraint based geolocation and trace route which is also used for uh, by using trace route and the hops in between to improve the geolocation uh, accuracy so um, now um, this is the closest landmark algorithm uh, which is also used by ripe IP map uh, uh, that we will see later um, so what you do is you issue from a lot of landmarks or as many landmarks as you as you want a ping measurement uh, towards the IP that you want to geolocate. Uh, you collect all of them, but you take into consideration only the fastest one, only the shortest, the, the smallest round trip time. And uh, you do the same thing, like the circle, the area around that, and uh, you basically say, well, the target is in the same city or anyway in the same country, depending on what you want to geolocate, of the landmark simple as that the target is in the same place of where the fastest landmark to reach the target is of course it works only if you have landmarks nearby otherwise it may be not accurate so to overcome this multilateration uh, is another algorithm that was created where you use instead of the fastest one you use some of them you create various areas and you uh, essentially place the target in the center of uh, the intersection of these areas. Um, the, uh, the, it, basically with this system, you can, in theory, was designed to have landmarks, less landmarks and even a bit farther because you can uh, basically operate in a continuous space. But the reality is that it has been proven various times that the quality uh, uh, anyway is not really good if the landmarks are far because the intersections are huge and in a way also in this case the position of the landmarks and the amount of landmarks is really important so just to clarify active geolocation at the moment is not really involved too much in the geolocation that you see provide produced by online services uh, it is mostly relatively new even if it's not really new uh, a field that in the last uh, five years six is taking more and more uh, uh, research on uh, it is used for example for validation but it is uh, not yet uh, so much diffused in production so just uh, you are aware there is though a production service uh, called ripe itima which is offered by ripe ncc um, so this is uh, our geolocation service offered by Ripe NCC, where um, the idea behind is that uh, there is a service that combines together various uh, geolocation algorithms, uh, each of them isolated in what it's called like geolocation engine. And uh, some of these can be uh, passive. Uh, they can be geofits, for example, from LACNIC, they can be uh, like uh, reverse DNS uh, and others are instead active methods. Uh, all these engines they provide their own answer for the same question and for the same question and after all the answers are, are grouped together and reduced in one single answer for the user. The, uh, among these engines there is the so-called uh, single radius which I uh, developed uh, while I was at Ripe NCC and what it does is um, it uses uh, active measurement done by the platform Ripe Atlas. At the moment, Ripe Atlas has more than 11,000 uh, probes distributed in the world. They are small hardware device hosted at home or anchors which are hosted in data centers. And essentially, uh, these probes and anchors are used, are used as landmark. Uh, uh, so are used as source of the latency measurement to reach the target. 
Um, now, this is possible because right buttress is massive, so it has a coverage in a lot of places. Uh, and I show you some example. Uh, so this is, uh, it has an API. Uh, this is, uh, you put the locate and the IP address, you click, and it just gives you a list of cities where this IP address is possible to be. So uh, why uh, a list of cities? Because if the circle, the one that you saw in the image before, it is uh, big enough, like look at this, if the circle is big enough, maybe more than one city are going to be inside the circle. And this is a pretty common uh, situation. Uh, but there is also this parameter score. Uh, so they are sorted by a score. The score is the possibility that such, uh, such uh, city uh, is the real city that you are looking for. So there is a probability score. So in general, if you want a geolocation, one only, you take the first one. Um, so there is also like the, the option you can do best and it will just tell you the first one, okay? And as you can see, there is also the geofit here. So um, now going back to the, uh, um, to what I was saying here, uh, it returns uh, uh, this city sorted by the distance from the landmark, the number of IXPs and facilities like data centers and population. These are factors, important factors, because they quantify the amount of internet infrastructure in a specific city, so they increase the possibility that that is the city that you're looking for compared to others. And RIPE PMAP is focusing especially on uh, geolocation of uh, infrastructure. Also, in the case uh, the IP is Anycast, uh, the platform will let you know and you can use this API to get the list of, uh, for example, we are querying for Google DNS, the list of all DNS instances that Ripe Atlas was able to discover with their uh, uh, location. So now, going back here, um, we did an evaluation with the uh, colleagues from CADA. Uh, I'm just going to uh, report the accuracy evaluation and the coverage evaluation, and we compare it with MaxMind and Net Equity for the accuracy. Uh, how do you do a uh, accuracy evaluation? So you take a data set of IP addresses of known location. You, this is a ground truth data set. So you know already where those addresses are, but you pretend that you don't know it, and you ask that question to the various platforms. And after you check, the information that you get back. Uh, we used uh, the platform ARC and LNOG, MLAB, and ARC proximity uh, data sets uh, where essentially they provide the geolocation, exact geolocation of these uh, IPs. In the table, you can also see the autonomous system distribution and everything. And in total, we uh, used for this experiment 968 IPs. We cannot, of course, use RIPE Atlas as a target because the uh, right IP map uses the right padlock, so we cannot just measure one thing with itself. And uh, also uh, there is the, uh, to test the coverage, we use the uh, uh, MANIC data set. So the coverage test, it means only that we want to know for how many IP addresses we have an answer. And we need only a data set big enough that has IPs that we are sure that can be reached with a ping. In this case, uh, the MANIC has more than 16,000 IPs. So these are the accuracy results. We use um, a geolocation within uh, um, an error that was maximum 40 kilometers. Uh, so what, uh, what that means that uh, in literature, in various occasions, uh, it's used this 40 kilometers to mention that it's like the size of the average, uh, like metropolitan area or whatever. So in, in anyway, the idea is that if the error is below 40 kilometers, it is accurate, the answer at city level. If it is above, it is not any more accurate at city level. And um, we use the latitude and longitude provided by uh, these three platforms. Net Equity and MaxMind are the leaders in uh, the uh, geolocation uh, at the moment. And we see that uh, for our ground truth data set, uh, we have that uh, single radius. It is actually uh, providing a better uh, geolocation of all the other uh, two. 
So it outperformed the other two in infrastructure geolocation. And uh, also if we study the median 75 and 95 percentile, uh, we have that um, uh, single radio has a 6, 26 and 30, uh, 344 kilometers of error, which essentially means that the 95th percentile, so the, uh, close to the upper bound of the error, is around 344 kilometers, while instead net equity and max mine have, for this specific 95th percentile, errors that reach around 3,000 kilometers. So even in this case, uh, ge active geolocation, which is done by Rai Patras in uh, this first method that we saw, where we just use one single the fastest of the things, in that case, it produces uh, a better results even when it's wrong. Um, so the accuracy actually is 80%. So 80%, 80.3% of the answers were with an error below 40 kilometers from the coordinates that we knew. So now, uh, the coverage. Uh, the coverage is um, uh, something different because uh, the uh, various geolocation uh, providers, they basically have a 100% coverage. They can provide you an answer for all the queries that you have. Uh, in the coverage, we don't want to know if the answer is correct or not. We just want to know how many answers can you get. Um, IP geolocation has a physical limitation because the target has to be pingable. The target has to be, of course, online and has to be close enough. Um, anyway, with our uh, um, MANIC dataset, which was 17, uh, 16,000 uh, IPs and more, we managed to have one answer for uh, at least 78.5% of them, which was actually, I have to admit, surprisingly uh, good uh, in terms of coverage. Of course, when you see these studies, also you have to consider uh, the platform use. Uh, they really, uh, for example, by Padras, they are more deployed in Europe and uh, US. And also the targets, the position of the targets, uh, uh, they may be not distributed in the same way in the various uh, uh, continents. So uh, um, we also did a study uh, for the various continents, but you have always to take into account the fact that um, it is based on uh, the uh, location where you are. So in particular, if you if we look at this map, which was done two years ago, uh, where for South America, we try to calculate the maximum theoretical accuracy that we could achieve with active geolocation uh, at that time, based on right patterns. At that time, uh, we uh, saw that this part here in the center, there are a lot of parts that could be geolocated with less than 10 kilometers error. The entire central part can be geolocated with uh, below 100 uh, kilometers error, uh, but there are also parts like the white one, which the error is above 400. Uh, so um, the situation in these two years drastically improved. Uh, for example, now if you go on the Ripe Atlas website, there are a lot of probes in this area, and in general, there are a lot of more probes in South America. Uh, but this is really dependent also on the platform use in this case right address. if you deploy more probes uh, the geolocation will include i will probably at some point update and calculate this uh, image again but requires good amount of time uh, to calculate all of it um, so i uh, basically i finished and i now would like to enable again the translation because if you have questions this is the moment Bueno, eh, gracias, Massimo. Voy a, hay algunas Thank you, Massimo. We have some questions which are similar and are related to one another. I'm going to ask one question. Some questions are repeated. People ask once again how to update the geolocation information. Maybe it would be appropriate if you could show the slides once again. Okay. And let me read out some of the questions. How can we determine who to address to update geolocation? 
from a block that has just been assigned to an organization. How can I determine who provides the geolocation, IP geolocation service to the website, which I cannot access? For example, a bank thinks that my computer is not in the country, and that is not the case. So, thank you for the question. So, if you are an end user, so if you are if you are like a user at home, you can essentially. Uh, not do anything about it. Um, what you can do is contact your uh, provider. If you are instead a provider, if you are a, an internet service provider or anyway uh, a network operator, I repeat uh, the steps. Uh, so you cannot identify who is doing uh, the wrong geolocation. So to identify that, you should just uh, ask to each of these providers or try all the methods because you don't know. For example, you don't know uh, who, uh, like uh, your bank, which geolocation provider is using. You, you cannot know that. This is a contract that they have. So you have some steps. So as I said, especially when you move one block from one region to another or from a company to another, everybody has this geolocation problem. The problem is because people use passive geolocation. So the providers, they use this passive geolocation to do it. I hope in the future providers, geolocation providers, we use more and more active or anyway, keep updated this geolocation more often. So the things that you should do is these steps. The first, you go in your RIR database and you check if the information that you provide there is uh, correct. So if you are a small provider, this may be useful because in general, uh, a lot of geolocation providers, they use such information, even if it's the wrong thing to do, because that is the geolocation of the, comp uh, the headquarter, not of the IP. But if you are a, a small geolocation provider, it could help. The second thing is, if you are in RIPE and APNIC, you could use this geoloc field. It's really not going to change so much, but at least you are good on your side for what you have to do. The third step that I suggest to do is you generate your geofeed file, you keep it updated every time you have one of these issues, you keep it updated, and every time you have one of these issues, you essentially send it to all of these providers, all these contacts that there is a list here because they provide 90% of the geolocation. So if you, uh, so like these four, you can just manually change it yourself, otherwise you just send the geofeed, or if uh, one thing that you could also use is this RIPE IPMA. RIPE IPMA uh, offers an API, but at the moment it is not the uh, most used uh, system, but some of these providers are starting to use it. Uh, so in the future, it may be uh, interesting. So uh, you could like uh, crowdsource that geolocation. So you provide your IP, whatever it is, and you provide uh, the uh, uh, with a post request you provide or a prefix you provide the city uh, in a specific format that is expressed in the um, in the walls uh, data set of right this is one way but uh, I mean this is not really going to help the thing that is going to help is to generate your geofit and send it to all these uh, providers to keep that updated and also if you have the geofit you can send it to Google and they also use it for their uh, geolocation pipeline. Eh, gracias, Massimo. Tenemos muchas preguntas. Eh, voy a tratar de. Thank you, Massimo. We have a lot of questions. I'm going to try not to repeat them. Bueno, hay una pregunta... There is a question in English. data Akamai uses once they identify client subnet in EDNS? Uh, I, I'm both not sure and I'm both not uh, aware if I can disclose such information. So I, I don't know how to answer at the moment. Yeah. But I think I, I think if you contact them directly, they uh, are going to answer. Some of the biggest providers like I said, Google, they also have their own system in the ground. So they basically take everything into account. Some providers, geofits, 
other uh, passive uh, thing and also they can crowdsource data so they can correct it also uh, themselves uh, if you contact them or if you provide the geofeed. Eh, gracias, Massimo. Estamos pasados del horario. Thank pero... you, Massimo. It's rather late, but there are several questions, so maybe we should try and answer some of them. Let's let's go a little. Yeah. On Andres Acevedo says, what vulnerabilities in terms of uh, uh, data security do you have uh, at the time of uh, publishing geofeeds of the entities? Uh, Geofeeds, uh, sorry, I didn't get the last part. Ge uh, what vulnerabilities uh, at the time of publishing geofeeds of the entities, of the organizations? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, no, I heard entity. I thought it was thought you were talking about my company. <laughs> so, no, no, okay. So, the, um, okay, so this is a really good question. Really, really good question. So, um, the first thing, I repeat, this is a self-published. You can publish only what you want. You can also just declare that you don't want to geolocate that specific uh, specific prefix. So the, the thing is that independently from what you want, geolocation providers are going to geolocate you. And uh, also you cannot prevent other people to do a latency measurement, so are you. So there is no way that you can prevent that. There is no way that you can say, oh, you cannot geolocate this IP address. Um, the GeoFeed uh, in particular, um, it is essentially a standard replacement for the uh, host name. So if you go back in the host name, operators have been annotating routers since ever, okay? So it is a standard replacement, standard if it's not, it's not a standard yet, but standard in the sense that there is one single format, clear, clear, clear that you can use. And if you can use it just to provide the geolocation of your routers, if you want, or of your uh, um, IP of the users. But in that case, it goes up to the city level accuracy. The zip code has been removed, so you cannot disclose anything else. So the privacy that you do is up to you. But anyway, city level geolocation of IP addresses, it is for IP addresses that they don't have tunnels and VPN and things like this. It is anyway possible. So there is not so much you can really disclose that is not uh, available already. I hope I can, I answer your question. It's a really interesting question. Uh, you can also contact me uh, later on my email if you, if I didn't answer completely or you have more questions. Bien. Eh, gracias, Massimo. Thank you, Massimo. Felipe Raul Felipe Guzman Faja says, for the calculations, did you take into account the parameters of satellite services? So, good. So with satellite services, basically at the moment, active geolocation, it's uh, a no-go. So uh, not only with uh, satellite, but also when you have tunnels, uh, uh, this is uh, creating issues. So at the moment there is no, you have always to consider that this, the active geolocation, but in reality, all geolocations are best effort. Uh, so if it is possible to reach the target in few milliseconds, fine otherwise there is no geolocation so in the case of satellite uh usually there is a limit on the amount of round trip time that you take into consideration for example right by team up does only measurements that reaches up to 10 milliseconds to reach the target and if it's more and with a satellite it's going to be more uh there is no geolocation I, but uh i just want to uh I want to, in the meanwhile, uh, I just uh, want to open a map just to clarify the idea of what is the coverage that we are talking and why it is possible in 80% of the test cases that we did to reach the target in less than 10 milliseconds. This is at the moment the, uh, uh, the coverage that the infrastructure has of the landmarks. Good, thank you. 
F gone asks, it's in English. Uh, yes, so the API uh, at the moment, uh, you can uh, you can go here. So at the moment, there are two ways. One is by single IP that, of course, you don't uh, necessarily want. The API is uh, pretty fast. There is a cluster behind. Uh, otherwise, there is an FTP dump that is done by RipenCC. The FTP dump has uh, less IPs of uh, the API for various technical reasons, um, among which is that uh, the IPs, uh, the geolocation, when you ask for an IP address in this API, uh, the, uh, you, you get immediately an answer if somebody else already asked that IP address. If you ask for an IP, this is a big limitation uh, that nobody else uh, actually asked before, you have to wait some minutes. So you have to use it integrated with maybe other system if you want to have always real-time answers. So, um, so if you use the FTP dump, you will always have only the one that somebody asks and somebody requests the answer. In that case, you find it in CSV format in the FTP dump. So if you Google, uh, you can find it like... Uh, you will find it for sure. Somewhere. Oh, there we go. Find it. Next question. Um, okay. Uh, la siguiente, bueno, es un poco fuera de topic. The next question is a bit out of topic. Maybe you can leave your address. It's by yeah. Javier Villagran. How can you be part of a RIPE Atlas work or how can you host a probe enabling you to do geolocation with the IPs assigned? Okay. Um, so it, it looks like I'm, I'm uh, again uh, uh, advertising RIPE Atlas. Uh, like uh, so, the um, the procedure is uh, don't contact me because I'm not anymore part of the Ripe Atlas stuff. But uh, go directly to the Atlas at Ripe.net. You can contact them if you have queries or everything. But in general, uh, there is like apply for a probe. I'm just googling and uh, and um, basically oh there we go. And there is the list of steps that you have to follow. And uh, they will just ship it for you for free. It is a small uh, device. Um, and uh, that's all. And after you have to connect it and keep it connected uh, as much as you can. If you connect it close to, for example, where you have your infrastructure, the right IP map geolocation will be definitely more accurate. Even if you put it in the same infrastructure, it will be, of course, much more accurate. Another thing that you can do is to uh, host a probe, uh, an anchor instead. Uh, but this is not for free. There is a small price, uh, I think 300 euro or something like that. And, but it's a one unit server. It um, has more benefits. But you can, you can read this page uh, on the benefits that you have. Thank you, Massimo. The next question is by Carlos Alejandro, and it goes as follows. How can I use active geolocation in a device that uses passive geo, for instance, F5? So, for instance, Yes, F5, he said. He says F5, he doesn't know uh, what it means. F5, like the the VPN software? What, what? The question is, how can I use active geolocation in a device that uses passive geo? I, I honestly didn't get the answer because a device doesn't use 
passive geo. So a device is or is connected or it is not connected. If a device is connected and is enabled to receive and answer latency measurement like ping, trace route, or even HTTP, whatever kind of traffic, it is possible to geolocate it with some error margin, but it is possible. So if a device it is connected, it is possible to geolocate it with some accuracy or with some error. If it is offline, completely offline, uh, it is not possible to geolocate it. Uh, so if you use a tunnel, a proxy, or whatever else, um, you may, of course, increase the error of the geolocation, or you may be geolocated in a different place. Uh, but uh, anyway, somebody has to be able to answer to whatever type of traffic. Yeah. Um... La siguiente pregunta está en inglés. The next question is in English again. F Gaunt. And it goes as follows. Do you populate a database periodically or do you actively geolocate the target on demand when you receive a query via your API? And if you update the database periodically, how often do you do it? And with which granularity? Uh, so, just a, a, a little bit. Do, do you geolocate the whole IP space or, for instance, one address per uh, slash 24 IPv4 address block? Okay. So, uh, okay, now I have to remember. Okay, the first question was uh, if, um, uh, so it, it, IPs are geolocated on demand. At the moment, the API has good amount of queries also because it is used in almost all research uh, carried out in active geolocation in the latest year, essentially. So it is used a lot and a lot of uh, experiments, they just run geolocation of uh, like interlinks or anything uh, in the infrastructure. After the answers are cached, so they are generated on demand with some minutes of delay because you have to do the calculation, do the measurements and everything. After the uh, answers are cached for, um, for um, like six months in general, but you can trigger, you can correct it, uh, or you can also uh, like in the future, depending on right, but um, trigger a recalculation. Uh, at the moment, the accuracy that is attempted is city level and uh, if it's not possible city level there is also other type like country or less but mostly uh, it's city level so i would like just to clarify uh, when the answer is provided the answer is usually correct or anyway a country level is almost always correct uh, but still, uh, the the platform it is not yet fully adopted by all the all the other geolocation providers. So not necessarily the correct answer of IP map means that you will have better geolocation because the sources are very tight. What was the last part? Sorry, I forgot. I think I answered it anyway. Uh, yes, I think. Okay, so uh, uh, we, 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 vamos a, a tener que terminando. De, we will have to wrap up. I'm going to ask a couple of more questions. But those of you who have more questions, you can please write to Massimo. Enrique Rivera is asking, the following, one of the IP geolocation objectives is to prevent frauds or the use of certain platforms in some regions of the world. However, how can you guarantee this if you use VPNs? Have you improved the way of detecting VPNs? Um, not personally. Uh, there is a lot of work uh, going on for the detection of VPN. I personally am not interested in, uh, in detecting VPN and I don't think I uh, necessarily uh, will uh, work on that. Um, but there are some techniques to 
and some of these are successful uh, according of some of these are uh, sold so that you can uh, buy a, a service for it and uh, so uh, so this is this is the answer uh, at the moment i didn't work on detecting vpn and right by pmap or any of the method that i show has any detection for VPN. I, I'm sure that uh, the major uh, uh, um, geolocation providers, they uh, also have services for that. Thank you, Maximo. There is one more question from F. Gaunt, and he says the following. This is in English. Pretty good. So, uh, really good questions uh, today. We are going to go over time uh, another hour. So, um, I did um, a research on that uh, related to this image that we uh, we are showing here. Um, I calculated for about IPv4 and IPv6 where possible. Um, unfortunately, at the moment, uh, the difference is uh, big. And especially in, in some uh, regions of the world. And uh, the reason is uh, for two, two main reasons. The first one is users at home don't have IPv6. I did recently, well, recently, uh, in, in May, I released a research about the impact of the coronavirus on the latencies in Europe. So it was out the 13th of May. I presented at the last right meeting, and there we also did a comparison between IPv4 and IPv6. And the reality is that at home in Europe, which is basically not one of the region, uh, one of the one, is not one of the worst in terms of IPv6 adoption. Even in Europe, the uh, IPv6 at home was so scarce that the probes of this platform, like Ripe Atlas or other platforms, that they are hosted at home they are uh, connected only in IPv4, so they can do only IPv4 measurement. So you cannot really calculate it, or you cannot really use it for active geolocation. And even on the opposite side, there are few targets of known location that you can use in the ground truth. So at the moment, the accuracy for IPv6, it is low, but even worse, it is also difficult to calculate it properly in all the regions. Uh, I have some numbers, mostly for uh, Europe and United States, uh, but it's clear that the accuracy is low. Bien. Eh, vamos con la última, Massimo. So let's go over to the final question, Massimo. The question is in English. I'm going to allow time for switching languages. Hello, Massimo. This is Swapnil Padneka. The format for self-published IP geolocation feeds is currently an informational internet draft and not a, a standard yet. Are you aware if there is a working group within the IETF trying to make this as a standard uh, as, that, uh, as that will push operators to embrace it? Um, it's, uh, I was talking about this, uh, this morning, uh, with, uh, with Randy Bush and, uh, yes, uh, it is, uh, an informational that has been there for quite some time now. Uh, and not only it is informational, but at the moment is even expired. If you look, it's expired the 10th of this month. Uh, so, uh, the, uh, the uh, I, I also mentioned that it's informational in the in the presentation, but at the moment it is the only really well thought approach for containing and flexible enough for containing this data. And I am sure that maybe they were a bit busy due to this coronavirus this period, but I'm sure that it will keep going on with this information. Also, it is the moment where more and more uh, providers are using it. I repeat. 
Google by itself produces that, but also reads for from under 400 other providers for what I uh, read. Uh, um, so it is. I don't think this is going to go away, and I uh, <clears throat> I hope they will be at some point at draft and at, at final RFC. Uh, yeah. This is uh, my, uh, anyway, the, the fact that this information doesn't declare anything about the adoption that it has. Bueno, este, gracias, Massimo. Esa fue la última. Eh. Thank you, Massimo. That was the last question. I think there was a lot of interest, many questions, many participants in this webinar. So we thank you very much, Massimo. We cannot give you a round of applause, but this will be a virtual applause. And thank, thank you, you everyone Massimo. for staying on throughout the webinar. That would be all. Massimo, would you like to say some words? Thank you very much. It was a really uh, nice round of questions and a good amount of participants. I really enjoyed a lot. So. Have a, a nice uh, rest of your day.